Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's going to be reviewing the Hyundai Santa Fe Limited. Before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Murdoch Hyundai here in Linden, Utah for giving me some time with this Santa Fe. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below. And then on a side note, if you can save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed dual clutch. Fuel economy is 20 around town and then 28 on the highway with power outputs being 281 horsepower and then 311 pound feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you guys can see super boxy with the design. You've got the Hyundai badge there front and center, and they have this cool H pattern there for the headlight design, well at least the kind of like turn signal indicator. So like if I unlock it, for example, you can see what I'm talking about. It's pretty sweet looking. And then notice how, again, very boxy here at the bottom. And putting it all together, this is a huge stylistic departure from what Hyundai is normally doing. I mean, you can see what they normally kind of have with their front ends, but I think it works really well. Now around the side here, our tire wheel setup is 255, 45, 20 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see here with the wheels, you've got this cool five spoke design with the silver. And look at that with the fender flare. And then you got the Santa Fe logo here on the side. And you can see the silver trim along the side as well. But then notice everything else is blacked out. And if we take a few steps back, here's your full side view with the Santa Fe Limited. And then here's a quick look at our key fob. We have our lock and unlock function. We've got the remote start function there as well. And you can see the self park function. And then you've got the opening for the hatch. And yeah, so lots built into the key fob. Now taking a look at the cargo area, pretty typical um, for three row SUVs, but I would say more space compared to what you get in most three row SUVs that are in the segment that the Santa Fe competes in. Got a 12 volt here on the side, and then you can see you've got these to fold down the second row. And then notice how they actually made that the same color as the rest of the interior that you guys will see. Uh, we do have our own climate in the rear. You can see USB and an outlet. Uh, and then the rear seats, by the way, look at that, perforated down the center, very nice trim overall. Um, I'm not going to pop in the third row of this because I've done this in other Santa Fe's. Basically you can fit adults in the back of the third row with the Santa Fe because the boxy design has got plenty of headroom and so again this is you know an SUV in this segment that is actually practical with the third row. Anyways when you're all done just press this and that will lower the hatch right back down. Now you notice that they actually put the tail lights completely on the hatch that moves and so you have secondary lights down below, which is very interesting. Um, you guys can see here with the exhaust tip and then notice the parking sensors as well there at the bottom. But yeah, putting it all together, really cool boxy design with the Santa Fe. And again, with those wheels, I think it makes the limited look really sharp. Now take a look at the door panel. You can see soft touch here at the top and then you got the sunshade. And then this is really cool with the wood trim and then more soft touch down below. Heated seats here for the second row. And then I love the handle here at Santa Fe. And then take a look at the seats, perforated all down the center. Got this really cool brown coloration. Legroom here in the back's really solid. We've got a little storage pocket there. Got the H pattern across. Look at the vent too. And then you have access to the center console here from the rear, which is nice feature. Got a little USB port there as well. We've got our own cup holder armrest. And then we do have a sunroof here in the back, which is cool. There's another one up front, just a regular one. And then headroom back here, it's good because again, the boxy design. Now take a look at the front door panel again, soft touch here, and you can see with all the rest of the trim, just like the back. All the window controls, mirror adjustments, mirrors do power fold in. Get your memory seat function, blind spot wiring with the mirrors as well. And then here's the front seat. Notice perforated all down the center, and that's cool. Again with the H's. And then we've got our adjustments here on the side. And you got that to open up the hatch, stability control. And then look at this with a dash. Just the trim pieces. Again, very premium look. Now take a look at the steering wheel. You can see soft touch all around, and that's cool with that trim there. Paddle shifters in the back for the eight speed. You got practical controls in the front, like your voice command controls. You got your adaptive cruise control as well. Lane keep assist, all the normal stuff. And you can see the stocks here on the back. And then we do have a column shifter with this. Now I will say in real life, um, the glare does get in the way a bit. And you can see, especially on the camera view, it's kind of hard to see the 
central gauge cluster here with this uh, coloration, which is how the sun is. Um, but anyways, uh, we've got all your information there in the center. And then when you change uh, with the different drive modes, it'll show here in the center as well. Now with the limited, this does come with a 360 camera system. So we can see this cool exterior shot and really good resolution trajectory on turn with the steering wheel. Uh, so I would say really good camera system overall. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, you can see it's connected in one unit with the gauge cluster. Uh, but again, quick response time with the system. Again, soft touch all across the dash. And then we have the double glove box, which is cool. So you've got like the upper lid here and you got the <laughs> cool stitching and everything across. And then you have the lower lid there. And then again, the H across. And look at the wood trim that goes across the dash. Just, I mean, look at that all together. That's fancy. Just forget that it's a Hyundai for a second. That is fancy looking. Then we have our climate controls down here, easy to control. You got some kind of, you know, physicality to it. Uh, this also does come with heated and ventilated seats, which is cool, we're gonna turn that off again. Drive mode select, four wheel drive lock. You can see auto stop start, hill descent control, it's for the camera, parking sensors. And then we've got some USB ports here as well. It must be for the glove box. Interesting. Um, and then you can see wireless phone charging pad. We also have, yep, more storage underneath there. And then we've got some cup holders here. And then you got the center console, which just feels so solid when you close it. It's just, yeah, super solid. Uh, and then just a black headliner. And then like I said, you got center here up front and then also in the back. So kind of hard to see because of the glare, but Santa Fe Limited, 2.5T. Pretty much everything's standard except in normal Hyundai fashion. You have to option out floor mats and stuff. $47,070, so total MSRP. And with that being said, let's sum things up. Well, let's show visibility here in the limited. So you can see over the hood, mirrors. And let's give the GoPro a second so you can see the back. Sometimes the GoPro doesn't turn super fast. Someone mentioned that in the comments, so I'm gonna try to look back for a little bit longer. So hopefully the GoPro kind of captures the rear visibility a little bit better. Um, but anyways, this is, uh, ooh, gonna be an interesting drive. I just realized that gray one there. I wanna show that quickly. I think that one's a limited as well. So you can see it still has the same design on the wheels, but notice that's like kind of blacked out. It's really cool. I'll go check that one out after just to make sure it is limited, but that might be a good one to do a video on because it's a little bit different design. Uh, with it but anyways um not really gonna do a full test drive with this one because i've already driven the new santa fe and i can tell you that they all drive the same um that might be a downside to some people but i think it's an upside they all just drive well so it's pretty straightforward with that i uh, just wanted to kind of use this point of view drive to talk about the limited because i think this is a super super good value uh and hear me out on this so with this uh, limited package, it's got this really nice interior. It looks great on the outside. Um, the only thing I will knock them for is the fender flares being unpainted. I think they, you know, in the limited package, I think they should paint them, but they may uh, just reserve that for the calligraphy. But yeah, really, it, it looks good. Oh, it has a turn signal camera. That's a cool feature here. Again, I don't know if you guys can see the glare on this. Hopefully you can change the color. I, I imagine you can to like white or something that would help with, uh, at least with how the lighting is today. But yeah, tons of features. And the price on this is very reasonable. So the average brand new car is about $47,000, which is what the sticker's for. And this, in my opinion, is elevated above the average brand new car. It has a nicer interior, more features, and so capable, right? It's a three row SUV, so you've got tons of space. Um, I, I just, yeah, I'm. I'm shocked. It's it's a really nice vehicle. Uh, and so <laughs> now I want to talk about how this is going to be, in my opinion, also a market disruptor in a way. So you've got the new Lexus GX 550. I've already talked about this. I think that's going to hurt Range Rover with Defender sales because it's going to be, you know, just as capable, if not more capable in some ways than the Land Rover Defender off-road and it's less money for a more equipped vehicle. Now, I made some comparisons with this against Land Rover and some people have been like, Ben, you can't make those comparisons. They, they aren't comparable. I think they are. Uh, and here's why. Land Rover, you know, for most people, they buy it because of the looks, also because of the status symbol. So you have people that always stick with Land Rover because of the status symbol side of things. But I think 
you know, from what I hear with when I talk to people and from comments, it seems like people are becoming value buyers more and more as time goes on. So this isn't going to drive quite as nice as a Range Rover Sport, for example. But there's a lot of people that were purchasing the lower end Range Rovers, like the Evoque, for example. I think this could pull sales from cars like that because it's got power, it's got practicality, it looks good, it drives really well, it's got a nice interior, and it's got, I mean, it's got a better warranty than uh, Land Rover with, I think, you know, yeah, because they're just a four-year warranty on theirs. So it, it just has a lot going for it. And so I think this, uh, cars like this are definitely a market disruptor because it's going to pull people that might consider a luxury car into a non-luxury brand like Hyundai because they're gonna realize, okay, well maybe this doesn't drive quite as nice as the luxury car, but it's close enough and it's got the features and it's more affordable. So let me know what you guys think about the Santa Fe Limited, but I, I think that this is, you know, especially for Land Rover because it looks so similar with how this is styled interior-wise and all that. I think it's a I think it's some bad news uh, for them and some of the other luxury car automakers.